In efforts to condense the history of AI, there's a lot of skipping around, so there may be some important parts left out of this video. But before we can get into AI, we need to get into a little bit about computers and the birth of computers. So the difference engine was created by Charles Babbage in the mid 1850s, and that led to the analytical engine, which were essentially calculators that still dwarfed any calculating device then in existence. And we also have to thank the mathematician George Bull for creating the algebraic logic and Boolean values, which evaluates true or false and is the fundamental of computer programming. And although the analytical engine was made mostly for computing algebraic expressions or polynomials, it really laid down the foundation for more advanced computing devices. So if we skip ahead to the war, that is World War II, 1945, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, also known as the ENIAC. This machine was designed by the United States Army Research Laboratory and was actually created and did help create the thermonuclear weapon, also known as the atom bomb. And so with this device, the first programmable electronic and general purpose digital computer has been completed. And with this being completed in 1945, this was still not accessible to the masses at all and was really just a more niche thing created for wartime. But with that being said, did lay a foundational landmark in how computers came to be today. Most revolutions in technology do not come without it being accessible to everyone. So if we look at some of the tech giants of this age, more specifically Microsoft, Apple, and IBM, we can start to think about the broader business and scientific use of computers. Because some of the problems before these tech giants got involved were the addition of programming language and the need for operating systems to manage the computers and also to write the software. So companies raced to be some of the first to create personal computers and with the invention of some operating systems like iOS and Windows and the microprocessor being invented, computers eventually became an item that were able to be owned in almost every household within the 1980s to 1990s. And a little bit before this, there were talks of artificial intelligence in the computing community. There was research done at Dartmouth and MIT about how artificial intelligence could come about and what technology might bring in the next upcoming years. But with computers still not being accessible to everyone, a lot of people were left in the dark and a lot of intelligent minds that would later come to work on computers may have never been introduced. So now with this personal computer revolution, a lot of people are buying computers and starting to work on developing new software, new programming languages, new hardware. And in the world of technology, open source means things that people can work on. This is almost when it became an open source availability for everyone and this is whenever it really took off. But now let's get into artificial intelligence as kind of the overview of computing. With all of this background now taking place into a more modern view, we can break down artificial intelligence into four main categories. Machine learning, which is a subset of AI in which algorithms are trained on data sets to become machine learning models, which are capable of performing specific tasks so if you're thinking of machine learning models, you can look at some modern day examples that say YouTube, which is Google, let's take Netflix, and whenever you are presented with a recommended for you, it's a machine learning model that will spit out what it recommends for you to watch next based on different inputs. And the most basic version of a machine learning model will be a decision tree, which is if A happens, maybe B will happen, if B doesn't happen, maybe C, and so forth. So a subset of machine learning is deep learning, which is an artificial neural network that mimic the human brain or used to perform more complex reasoning tasks without human intervention. And a quick example to put it in more simplistic terms, you can think of autonomous driving, where this whole network of things that they need to de detect and classify, whether it is a car, a person, or a traffic sign, 
and this would need to be done quickly and precisely in order to work. Another subset of AI is natural language processing, which focuses on creating software capable of interpreting human communication. Some examples of this would be the very popular ChatGPT, where you can type something in in a way you'd speak it, and it is able to come back with a response that's also in a humanistic way. And Watson, which was IBM's machine that was pinned against humans in Jeopardy, which we'll focus a bit more on later. And the last subset of AI we'll talk about is robotics, which is focused on creating robots capable of learning and performing complex tasks in real world environments. And if you've ever seen the movie iRobot, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just kidding with iRobot, but if you've ever seen Boston Dynamics and the robots that they have created, this is the beginning of creating, you know, these complex robots. Now that we know the general breakdown on the different subsets of AI, we can go over some notable achievements, some of which have already been mentioned, as well as taking a look into future computing in AI. Artificial intelligence has already found itself useful, and we'll get into the year of 1984 when Carnegie Mellon created an autonomous car, it was a Mercedes-Benz, and in 1984, it was able to drive on roads without obstacles. And just three years later, in 1987, the autonomous car was already able to use deep learning in neural networks to detect different cars, people, and traffic stops, or signs. And at the time, people couldn't fathom that this was possible, which all of these achievements have in common, that they were groundbreaking at the time. And although we aren't all currently using autonomous cars, this was a breakthrough that showed it was even possible. And if we skip ahead to 1997, IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov, who was a six-time world chess champion. And so the significance of beating the best chess player in the world is proving that machines could outsmart and outplay even some of the best humans. In chess, the amount of possible variations is 10 to the 40th power, or 10 with 40 zeros after. This means that there are even more possible variations of chess games than there are atoms in the observable universe. So in the case of IBM's Deep Blue, it was able to calculate within 100 to 200 million possible moves to pick the best. And now skipping ahead to 2011 when IBM's Watson was on Jeopardy. Even a broken one of these on your wall is right twice a day. Watson, what is clock? Clock is correct. And with that, you move up to 23,000. 18,210. Watson was a machine built by IBM that was able to use natural language processing along with huge databases that would then use machine learning to pick the most reasonable answer. Once again, machines came out on top as it beat the two best Jeopardy players. And with the complexity of Jeopardy's questions having a bit of deception and humor in them, this was a feat that no one thought was possible. And these three achievements by AI are some of the most well-known and might be the most covered by mainstream media, but there are so many other use cases, such as building or simulating the biology of human cells and how they interact, making new discoveries in material science, and with helping build complex structures in engineering. And more and more, the use cases for AI seem endless. And if we take a quick look to the future, IBM, along with other companies, are working on quantum computing. These machines will be over a million times faster than the already built supercomputers that certain companies have been working on. So one of the only limits of AI and computing in general is the capacity and capability of the machines. With this new era of machines coming to light quickly, the future of computing and AI might only be predicted by AI itself.